Yes, the UFC is the greatest and best fight promotion that there is on the planet, but I can't help but feel that if you were to throw a literal monkey into outer space and cut off all of their communication with us here on Earth, they would make better business decisions than Dana White, the UFC brass, and the rest of his cronies are making this year. Now, despite all of the success and the epic cards that they've put together, I don't want you guys to be distracted from some of these gaping flaws in their future plans for the UFC that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. I'm almost convinced that they hate money or they are working for someone that is trying to destroy and tank the UFC. That's how horrifically bad some of these decisions are. So this is a little business lecture. Dana White and your cronies are all ready to come in and let's just get right to it. Okay guys, welcome to class, business for dummies. Dana White, come on in, all the UFC cronies. Let's just get right to it. The first order of business, we don't give a single fuck about Stipe Miocic and John Jones, all right? I'm getting right to it. The cat's out of the bag. And I'm sure he's gonna put up a better fight than Cyril Gaon, who we know is a fraud now, but at the end of the day, ever since Jones dominated Gaon, we know Stipe doesn't have a fucking chance. I don't think he's gonna get submitted in the first couple minutes. It doesn't matter. We don't think he has a chance. He doesn't. He's an old man. All right, he's like that uncle that is bedridden, that used to be a strict guy. Oh, he used to be really strict. And you go to your aunt's house and your uncle's in the living room, in a bed, watching soccer. This is the big bad test for John Jones, everybody. This is it. This is the guy that we are going to feed to the GOAT the best fighter that ever lived. I know he's the heavyweight GOAT. I put respect on this man's name. I understand. He is no threat to John Jones. This guy is in his 40s. He is a full-time firefighter, which is good, beautiful. He's a great person. But we don't take this man seriously. We don't give a single fuck about this fight anymore. The only person who is really benefiting from this is John Jones. The fans would rather see him fight 10 other fucking heavyweights. Jones benefits because in a hundred years, you can look at his resume and say, damn, he took out Stipe Miocic. We know how good Stipe was, but they won't remember the circumstance that Stipe was coming off of an embarrassing loss. Look at this guy. Francis Ngannou buried this man. It's not a good look to put the goat of the sport against someone that was just buried a few years ago, all right? That's not a good look at all. And I know Stipe's a dog, but he's more of an old hound who's got that graying look that old dogs have these days. As I said, he's like the uncle that's bedridden, that's just propped up in front of the TV watching soccer. The guy that used to be a stern guy, he used to be strict. Not anymore, not, not, that's not that guy anymore. You know what I mean? The goat needs to fight a fucking monster. He needs to fight someone that actually has furious power in his hands. That's what we wanted to see with John Jones at heavyweight. All right, we thought maybe Gon is gonna be a little bit different than that. Maybe Gon will be even tougher than these other heavyweights, but Gon cannot grapple for the life of him. So we still have yet to see Jones go up to heavyweight to fight a guy that can put his lights out with a couple of shots. That's what was so interesting about the Francis Ngannou fight. And the only replacement for Francis Ngannou is this man, Sergei Pavlovich. This is his replacement. Six first round KOs in a row. That's a heavyweight record. This is the guy that we want to see John Jones fight. We don't think that this man is a threat. Look at this photo and tell me this is the one who is going to put up a better fight than this scary Russian fucking monster. All right? We don't know how John Jones does against a guy that could knock him out with one shot. I get Stipe knocked a bunch of guys out. Stipe has KO power. Not at this old age. He's basically in a wheelchair at this point. God, God damn it. Just get John Jones in there with Sergei Pavlovich. He's a horrific, terrifying heavyweight. He can knock John Jones out. And then if John Jones beats him, we can say, God damn, that's what the GOAT does. All right, because I'd pick John Jones to beat this man. This guy is scary. He's like the next level Francis Ngannou, but he's still not good enough to beat the GOAT. The thing is you have to put the GOAT of the sport against some real challenges. And if John Jones beat Stipe Miocic, he would have never faced the real heavyweight monsters 
okay? He would have never gone up against the big punchers at heavyweight. That's the allure of John Jones fighting at heavyweight in the first place. So if the UFC makes the Stipe fight, they are number one, neglecting what the fans actually want. They are only benefiting John Jones 100 years from now on paper. That's it. We do not seriously get excited for Stipe Miocic to get destroyed by John Jones. With Sergei Pavlovich, anything can happen, all right? So that's an awful business move for the UFC. I don't care about John Jones and Stipe anymore, and I'm sure you guys don't either. The next one, UFC 289 is an abomination to humanity, okay? That is the truth. Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena, we don't care about this fight either, all right? We've seen them fight twice. Pena pulled off one of the greatest upsets in UFC history. Congrats to her. Amanda Nunes came back and beat her ass in the rematch. All right. Now, we know that Pena doesn't deserve a trilogy. We don't really care about this fight to begin with. All right. We probably know Amanda Nunes is going to take it. But that's not why it's an abomination to humanity. The reason it's an abomination to humanity is because it's a main event. And I always say, the main event is what represents the card. Okay? The card is just as good as the main event. And it doesn't matter how stacked the co-main is. It doesn't matter how good Charles and Benil Dariush is. The whole card is completely screwed now that this is the main event. And I don't understand what the UFC is doing here because they know goddamn well if they were to make Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush the face of the card, that would bring more hype. But because they are going to advertise this card as Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena on the big poster and Charles and Benil underneath, that automatically says, no money, we don't want money, we don't want money. They don't care about money. <laughs> Why do I care about money? Because, dude, it's like, what are you fucking doing? Put a real fucking main event in there, dude. It doesn't matter if, you know, the main event is not a title fight. They have this idea, well, if a title fight's on there, it's got to be the main event. You know, it has to be the main event. No, it doesn't. You guys have done Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal in the main event. You know what I mean? You've done Masvidal and Diaz in a main event. You've done Connor and Donald Cerrone. You've done Dustin and Connor. You've done main events that aren't title fights. It doesn't matter if this is a title fight. Break the fucking mold. Break it a little bit because you're gonna sell more pay-per-views if these guys are the ones that are representing the card on the big stage, on the posters. These are the main faces, all right? 95% of MMA fans are more invested in Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush than they are in Juliana Pena and Amanda Nunes, where if you didn't even have the Charles fight, that would sell 10,000 pay-per-views if the if ESPN wanted to chip in, here's 10,000, we feel bad. No one would actually buy it, all right? I don't get it, man. I really don't. The fact that it's, I, I don't even care about that being on the card or whatever. Just why is it the main? Okay, I'd rather have Bryce Mitchell and Mozvar Evloev as the main event. It is more exciting, all right? The UFC fans, we aren't like that dense to where, oh, a title is going to make us go so crazy. Oh, the title's on the line. We don't care. Okay, it's not an interesting title fight. Charles and Benil is the real main event. And people will be leaving the stadium 100%. After Charles and Benil fight, you are going to see at least a couple of thousand people, maybe five or 6,000, get out of their seats and go home early to beat traffic. That's probably what I would do. Okay, maybe I wouldn't do that, all right? Because Amanda Nunes fights can be fun. But you're losing money. You know, the card, as I said, is as good as the main event. And this is the representative. These are going to be the little faces on the poster. Fuck off. Okay, just because it's a title fight doesn't mean it has to be the main event. I'm sick and I'm tired of that. Next up, the UFC is ruining their next potential biggest star. That's right. Hamza Chemaev has gone from my favorite fighter in the UFC to a top three favorite fighter in the UFC. And now he is... One guy that I just get annoyed when I hear his name. I just, I, I instantly don't want to even hear about this man's name anymore because I'm so fucking fed up with the fact that the UFC keeps holding this man off. For what? For, for a Paulo Costa fight? That's the guy? We're holding him up for the big megastar Paulo Costa? The big power puncher that hasn't beat a single ranked UFC fighter? Paulo doesn't even have one single goddamn win over any active UFC fighter. And we're holding Hamza up because of that. 
This guy was fighting every week, destroying people every week. And I don't even care if you guys don't like this, but ever since he had a close fight with Gilbert Burns, he lost a shitload of his hype. Part of this man's hype was the fact that he was unbeatable. He was looking like he was going to do what he did to Li Jing Liang, make him look like a baby in the octagon to everyone. He didn't do it to Gilbert Burns. I said, oh, he looked human. He's lost a little bit of hype. That's okay. He's still good, but he's lost a little bit of hype. People tried to call me a hater. They said, bro, you're underrating Gilbert Burns. And I was just telling the truth. He lost a little bit of hype making it close with Gilbert Burns. That's just a fact. He lost a little bit of that allure to where he looked unbeatable. He still is a monster. He can still be a champion. Why has he not fought since Kevin Holland? Get him in there now against Jared Cannonier, against Marvin Vittori. Why does it have to be Paulo Costa? Why are we waiting for Abu Dhabi in October? Get this motherfucker a fight. He is the biggest potential star in the UFC and you haven't given this man a fight. Now, I understand his team has gone on record recently saying, we're not just going to let him take early fights. We're not going to let him take short notice fights anymore because guys are too good for, you know, that. We, we have to respect everyone at this point. And I get it, but like, come on. We don't need to see the Costa fight. It's an interesting matchup for sure, but I'd rather see him just fight someone rather than wait another six months to have him fight Paulo overrated Costa. And um, again, this guy's hype is massively declined. You know, sure, he's going to come back and people are going to care. But at the end of the day, uh, he needs to be active. This guy's whole thing was he's a monster. He's so goddamn good and terrifying. He doesn't even care who he'll fight. He'll fight anyone and he'll dominate them. That's how confident he is. This guy was giving me like Tyson, Muhammad Ali vibes in the lead up to the Gilbert Burns fight. You know what I mean? Like, I honestly thought that this was the chosen one. This was like the Michael Jordan future of MMA. That's how horrific he was. But now that you've hold, held him out, he's just another fighter that's out here negotiating around and waiting around and taking the, the, the most convenient matchups. Like, enough is enough, bro. I can't stand the fact that they fucked this guy's stardom up. He's no longer a massive megastar. He had way more. This man had hype. He had more hype in 2020 than he does now. And the last one, Raquel Pennington and Irene Aldana. Now, I've already said, I don't have a problem with this fight. Amanda Nunes and Juliana Pena, it will be a fun fight. But the fact that it's the main event makes no sense. It should not be the face of the card when you have other good fights on it. And the truth is, look at this. Raquel Pennington, Irene Aldana. This is the main event for a fight night in a few weeks. I'm convinced at this point that it's just a status quo thing. The UFC has to have a certain amount of main events that are headlined by you know, people in WMMA. That's just the facts. Because Edmund Shabazian and Anthony Hernandez, those are more recognizable names. Those are people that we can identify. We can look back and say, I remember Edmund Shabazian's fight with Dalcha Lungiambula. I remember he fought Derek Brunson. I remember he knocked out Brad Tavares. You know, I remember when Anthony Hernandez submitted uh, Rodolfo, bro. You know, the, the, the jiu-jitsu, big swing of dick of the jiu-jitsu community. I remember that. Bro, we don't have anything of reference for Raquel Pennington. I, I've probably seen Raquel Pennington fight. I couldn't tell you a single one of her past matchups. I don't know a single one. All right, Irene Aldana, I'm sure I've seen her fight. I literally could not tell you that, oh, this is what happened in one of her fights. Oh, I remember that. I don't remember anything. And I've seen them. That's how unrecognizable these names are. You know what I mean? Andre Fialho, we remember this man was as active as could be. You know what I mean? He was going on a tear, knocking out a bunch of guys. Then he fought, you know, Jake Matthews and he got KO'd there. And he's had a little bit of a rough streak lately. And Joaquin Buckley, the most impressive KO, arguably, in the last couple years. And, you know, Joaquin Buckley is coming off of a fight with Chris Curtis. He got KO'd by and Mavov. My point is, I know these guys. I know Joaquin Buckley. I know Andre Fialho. I know Edmund Shabazi. And I know Anthony Hernandez. Why are those guys not the main event? I understand Andre Fialho and Joaquin Buckley is not like a good main event either. That's like, you know, this is kind of the, this is a weird main event. This doesn't make sense. This is not like a number one contenders fight. It doesn't matter if Raquel Pennington and Irene Aldana is close to being a number one contenders fight. We don't know who they are. They are the headline of the card. They are on the poster. The name of the card is Pennington Aldana. Nobody has any care in the world about that. 
Whereas if it was Shabazi and Hernandez, at least it's like, okay, Shabazi and let's, let's go. This is going to be an exciting fight. Joaquin Buckley, Andre Fialho, okay, this is going to be an exciting fight. Make one of these the main events. All right, if the main event's weak to begin with, at least do someone that we could recognize. I'm convinced, as I said, that they are just putting together a certain amount of main events every year that fit the status quo. And you know exactly what I'm saying. Um, that's just how it is, man. At the end of the day, the UFC doesn't like money. They want to make John Jones versus Stipe, even though that completely defeats the purpose of John Jones moving to heavyweight to begin with. Okay, John Jones moving to heavyweight was about us thinking, holy shit, he could get knocked out. We do not think that this man in this photo is capable of doing that at this point in time. All right? In 2021, I would have picked Stipe Miocic to beat John Jones. All right? In 2020, I would have picked him to beat John Jones. Not anymore. He will be a tougher fight than Cyril Gaon still, even if they do fight this year. But come on, man. And you're holding up the division again. Stipe's a bitch to deal with, bro. I'm back on the Stipe rant. This is another reason why I don't like this fight. Sergei Pavlovich is a hungry, hungry man. All right? Look at him. He's a cold Russian mother... He said that the thing he likes to do the most in life, the way he enjoys his pastime, is by working out. Anything that has to do with working out, this guy likes. Stipe's a family man. He's a working man. He's busy as hell, bro. Of course, he doesn't want to have to go through an entire training camp while still working and still being a family man. It's tough. I respect Stipe big time. But like... He's gonna be negotiating big time, and we know what the fuck that means. That means that we might not even get to see Jones fight for the rest of the year. Like, we were all convinced this was gonna be headlining International Fight Week. Now it's moved to November. You know where this is going. You know in December we're gonna be talking about maybe John Jones is gonna come back on the March card. Like, fuck that. Let's get Sergey Pavlovich in the cage with Jones now. This is the test. This is the guy. All right? We want Jones to fight a monster. We wanted to see him in Nganu. We wanted to see what would happen if Jones is in front of a guy that could knock him out with one shot. One punch can change the fight with this man. Stipe, yes, I understand Stipe could land something on Jones. He can give him a couple exchanges on the feet. But he's not in his prime anymore. He doesn't have the 84-inch reach. He has an 81-inch reach. It's not terrible. But he doesn't have the 84-inch reach with, like, extreme power that is on a six fight win streak KOing everyone knocking out Curtis Blades which is supposed to be his nightmare matchup so far Stipe back in the day nightmare that's also a dangerous fighter that can knock you out for sure he was a knockout guy back in the day it's just not the same anymore man I hope you guys enjoyed the video 